In May 2014, international top researchers have come together to meet at a conference on climate policy in the context of finance policy. This public finance workshop was organized by the Mercator Research Institute on Global Commons and Climate Change that explores sustainable economic development at the background of climate changes. During this MCC meeting, not only academic discussions about the relationship between CO2 emission prices and tax policies were brought forward. Furthermore, the awareness of the policymakers should be strengthened as to what effects emission prices do have on investors or the international tax competition. For that purpose, the scientists seek to identify new pathways. These are supposed to allow fair appraisal of the management of long-term climate risks on the one hand and short-term concerns, for instance, about economic growth on the other hand. Topic is important. Uh, we have many great scientists in that area which gather here. Go a little bit beyond the theoretical discussion and look at what decision makers and, and politicians can really implement in the real world in rich and developing countries. I think this workshop is highly relevant um, for public discussions because it explores uh, alternative pathways um, and helps us um, better see what options we have. In talks and discussions, the interrelation of policy and research was elaborated. To put it in a nutshell, the core subject was focused on taxation in view of greenhouse gas emissions. But now we realize that the subject of carbon pricing can and should be embedded much more broadly in the public finance stuff. Every country wants a low cap. They want it as low, in their narrow self-interest, they want the cap as low as possible. I don't think countries actually have been acting fully in their own uh, narrow self-interest. The relevance of taxation can also be shown by concrete regional examples. For instance, reform of the European trading system would bring about these effects. Greece could actually receive 3.4% of the budget from imposing a higher carbon price, covering more sectors and auctioning more of, of the permits on the European scale, which would of course help to um, meet some of the shortfall of the budget deficit. Also in China, approaches of CO2 taxation can be observed. In China, we have our uh, pilot system. Uh, we have uh, five cities, two provinces. Uh, it covers about uh, 7 to 10 percent of our total carbon emissions. It is important to learn from problems of the past, too. For instance, in Australia. My position is actually bad policy design based on politics will eventually destroy any policy. So to me, that's the lesson from the Australian experience. You've got to get the design right, and it's got to be done in a way which is a lot of, a lot of expert input, and you've got to sell it, the message, to the political constituencies out there rather than let the narrow interests dominate the debate. But how can the gained insights and knowledge of the research strengthen the understanding of decision makers? Simplicity matters, simple messages to politicians, simple requests, though I think it, it is nuanced in the sense that simply saying to a politician in the United States, tax carbon is not, is not really compelling uh, because we, you then conflate the issue of environmental policy with the optimal size of government, and that's a huge issue in the United States. So for me, the biggest challenge is international cooperation. But what I learned from this debate on international cooperation are basically two, two important aspects. The one is, it is worthwhile to think much more carefully about this concept of focal points. And the other one, uh, which I find very fascinating, uh, what uh, Warwick put on the table, this is this issue of, of, of long-term assets. The question remains, what solutions and insights the Public Finance Workshop has resulted in for participants? It was a fantastic convention of practitioners and uh, theoretical academic economists uh, from countries almost from every continent. It's a very broad uh, picture of the uh, state of science and, and, and research and also of the science policy interface, even though I think, and, and this is a very good thing, that it focuses on the research questions. What I especially liked was Marty Weissman's idea on no longer negotiating on quantities, but negotiating on price. So you focus on one thing, the price of carbon in the world, rather on how much each country should emit. Emission pricing appears to be one of the most important factors to reduce the global emission of greenhouse gas. 
After all, a CO2 taxation would not only favor the environment, it could also improve the competitiveness of countries and reduce public debts.